Um, I'm really grateful that you're here. Great that we join today in the rebirth sessions. That you made it. That you could carve out a little piece out of your daily schedule to to be here. That's great. Or maybe you had a very quiet day. That's wonderful too. Then you have all the space in the universe to to join. That's wonderful too. Whatever happened to you today so far and um, so this yeah this is the rebirth sessions rebirth sessions are say the moments we come together in fact to come to the place where a rebirth is possible where I mean, yeah you in fact start to feel a single desire for the father and that's exactly the place where that happens like that's where rebirth is possible to go so deep in inwardly and leave everything behind for just a moment to come to the place where you can receive that and where you start to feel gratitude out of nowhere and when where you really feel uh, happiness being stirred up in you for no specific reason but just actually wanting to go deeper into that like wow so this is the rebirth sessions and we 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 in fact stand still and come to that place and use whatever means use whatever is given us to share to come to that place inside yourself yeah what what uh, does need to happen for that today we don't know so it's like the the possibility and that is given here we are going to discover it is not clear what that is yet what it is it is going to be given we need to literally allow that to come down to us uh, allow that to sink into our consciousness and this just for the whole occasion of um, I'm opening my mind I opening my consciousness for for a connection for a for an wow yeah like opening up for receptivity for for communication for going beyond your daily life going beyond what you call your existence and that's so incredible like that's so incredible the opportunity you have you can start your day like that it's amazing and you can repeat it during the day like we do now sometimes in the say of daily in a tabernacle moment in which we start to become quiet just like that and and say say come move closer to this single desire for the father to go so deep within that you have like oh my god and there's something totally different going on and this has not anything to do with with what seemed to have happened in the past now this is a brand new moment and um, it is a, as if I'm entering into a sanctuary as if I'm entering into a ceremony where I'm suddenly part of um, within such bright incredible light and with no speck of anything on on it it's completely clean and clear and that is that's in fact the yeah the healing moment or the rebirth moment where that seems to happen just by itself just because you are not standing in the way or you're not stuffing your consciousness with all all kinds of other things that you think or that you have to do or that you'd be concerned about or that all of this stuff so there's a very incredible pure light healing light coming to us and we're able to receive that and able to step so deeply into that that's just totally amazing now today we we start with a meditation um, this meditation was given by Michelle she she said it first in uh, French she wrote it too so it came to her as an as an idea it's like receiving that on, from the bottom of her heart deeply like that you can feel that when you when you let it come to you 
and um, I made some music for it and and also start using the same words but then in English to to share with you to come to that it's like to come to that place where you can actually literally breathe um, what it says to come so deeply to the to the essence of what is being transferred here that you recognize so well as being a total part of yourself that's so beautiful so we're going to share that right now and use it as a contemplation meditation so we played a couple of times two times probably with with some time in between four or five minutes of silence just to to see if we can come to the place where where there's receptivity where you actually are s suddenly feeling the passion of your love for god that's really the invitation and it's written for that it is it is an yeah demonstration of that Méditation. Au-delà du monde, j'écoute mon cœur, il sait. J'écoute la petite voix, elle sait et me précède. Sans forme, je suis divin. Dans sa présence, je danse. Danse la danse sacrée. Il est le parfum de la fleur. Je suis le parfum de la fleur. Il est l'arbre qui donne. Je suis l'arbre qui reçoit. Il enveloppe toute l'existence. J'enveloppe toute l'existence. Je me pose devant la mer et me laisse remplir de sa beauté. Je vois et laisse la mer me nettoyer. Je descends profondément en elle. Il n'y a que moi et son souffle, son énergie vitale. Je prends son rythme qui est le mien. Dans un profond amour et gratitude, je me relie une communication illimitée pour toute l'éternité. Oh, mon doux Seigneur, merci. I listen to my heart, it knows. I listen to the little voice, it knows and precedes me. Without form, I'm divine. In this presence, I dance, dance the sacred dance. He is the scent of the flower, I'm the scent of the flower. He is the tree that gives, I am the tree that receives. It envelops all existence. I envelop all existence. I stand in front of the sea and let myself be filled with its majesty. I see and let the sea cleanse me. I go down deep. There is only me and his breath, his vital energy. I take his rhythm, which is mine. In deep love and gratitude, I connect unlimited communication for all eternity. Oh, my sweet Lord, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in this moment of silence yeah, in this in this meditation. So thank you, Michelle, for that. Um, yeah, we continue and with the rebirth sessions. And last time uh, that we came together, um, something came up like we used the idea of a healing target or a healing moment, you could say. And uh, that is essential in the rebirth sessions. Like there, there is a, um, this is about the application of the teaching, of the teaching of, yeah, of course, in miracles, the infinite way. That's about, yeah, the New Testament, of course. We use Sri Aurobindo now and then, uh, but it's not about that. Like it is actually coming to the essence of all of it. And, and recognizing the yeah the opportunities for healing that are being provided now we can um, say to bring it back to an, to a real practical application you have to start with in fact with your experience where do you find yourself and now um, there's a lot changing and there's a lot possible in in the transformation of your mind if you allow that to occur there's there's a lot possible because in fact um, see god created you perfectly right like nobody doubts that like yeah i'm, I'm perfectly created by god so to to go th uh, through episodes in which you say suffer severe pain or suffer severe loss or all of this like the only reason why that would come up is for healing and um, so i'm say calling this um, session you could say healing target pain now in order to heal something um, it is good to realize what actually is what is being healed or what actually is pain for instance what is pain um yeah what is pain and yeah you can come up with all kinds of definitions but you know how it feels and in fact we don't differentiate between mental pain or physical pain or emotional pain or who knows what kind of pain you carry with you or are undergoing or are you offering for healing because in fact that is the invitation with the pain that you are experiencing the invitation is to so to actually recognize it for what it is and to to hand it over or to yeah do something with it in a sense and uh, or maybe just feel it completely and allowing a change to occur now we have said these things like we we have said these things um, but I want to get into it a little deeper uh, because this is so fundamental and some some of the phrases that came to me the other day um, in in a healing moment it's like are still echoing in my mind you could say in my it's like oh this is good to to take another look at and to see where the origin of it is for instance in the Course in Miracles so that's why I want to use, uh, I, I always love to use the, like, this little booklet. It's the Miracle Healer's Handbook. And it's, it's parts from the uh, Manual for Teachers. And some uh, Miracle Principles are in it, just about 50 of them. And of course, I'm going to read one. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> um, and we have used this before, of course. It is, that is not new, but maybe it's new to you. So great. You can download it. I will. I will put it on the website again, and and you can download it um, as a PDF. It's it's great to use because in fact it's, uh, yeah. It if you follow the instruction or the, say are opening up for the change that can occur, um, the the ideas that are being shared here have literally unlimited healing power, because they refer to the truth of you so of course that will lead to healing since you are perfectly created by your creator um, 
Yeah, so we, we were talking about the, uh, say, the definitions of yourself and um, all the things that you think you are seemingly having an influence on the way that you feel. And in your experience, that is true. As long as you identify with the thoughts that you are thinking, that is the case for you. You literally choose for a dualistic uh, reference point. Now, like you see here, the two heads, like they're all pointed in different directions, almost like a, a Janus head, I think it's called. Like two heads. One says yes, one said no, and maybe, oh, certain, or who knows what. Like the duality is literally behind me uh, in f <laughs> as an illustration. But there's something there for us, and we will discover more about that in a moment. So I'm going to read Miracle Principle with the, like the perfect capacity to have infinite healing power. Now, did I already prepare and see which one I'm going to take? No. Is that going to be given to me in this instant? Absolutely. And is that the perfect one for this instant for you to receive that? No doubt about it. So here it comes. A miracle is a universal blessing from God through me to all my brothers. It is the privilege of the forgiven to forgive. Now, a, a miracle is a universal blessing from God through me to all my brothers. It is the privilege of the forgiven to forgive. Well, we ask for that. We, we love to receive a universal blessing from God, right? In this instant, it's all we, yeah, we need, you could say. That's all we need. It's all that would bring us home if we would experience that. Well, he, we, we can ask for that. Like, a miracle is that. Now, if my mind is open to receive that, if, if my consciousness is open to receive that, why do you think it would not be given to you, right? It is, it is for you, it's for nobody else, because there is nobody else but you. So it's like you, you're going to receive this for yourself. A miracle is a universal blessing from God. And I share it with my brother immediately. When I receive it, I give it away. I learn to give what I've received. Now here I receive this miracle for myself and it extends to you. Is that happening in this instant? Yeah, absolutely. So it extends in this moment to you and it has infinite healing power because it's not coming from me. It is a universal blessing from God. Of course it has unlimited healing power since it will literally bring you back to um, your full awareness of the fact that you are one with your creator that you're one with god so that was just one miracle principle so probably nobody nobody objects to this right okay so a miracle is never lost it may touch many people you have not even met and produce undreamed of changes in situations of which you are not even aware. Now, that's, that's quite something. A miracle is never lost. It may touch many people you have not even met. And produce undreamed of changes in situations where you, which you are not even aware of. Oh, wow, great. Give me more. <laughs> The miracle is the only device at your immediate disposal for controlling time. Only revelation transcends it, having nothing to do with time at all. Okay, so the miracle is the only device at your immediate disposal for controlling time. Basically, for shortening time, shortening the suffering, shortening the pain. Okay. Well, this was a little bit of warming up, you could say. Um, so I'm going to share with you some expressions that came to me to share. And uh, the thing with that is um, they are from the manual for teachers. Of, so that's volume 
three of uh, the Urtext and or the Blue Book, like that's possible too. The Blue Book of A Course in Miracles, you can use that just as well, and it will it will tell you the same. And you'll see there's hardly any difference. And uh, now he, I'm going to share some sheets with some facts you could say, and that can totally help you with our specific healing target of today. Healing target pain. Healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of sickness is for. I'm just reading this now. Healing is impossible without this. So healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of sickness is for, right? You got to know what this has to do with. Healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of sickness is for. It's like apparently there's an you got to understand how this works, the illusion of sickness. Healing is impossible without this. So you got to know this in order to receive healing, you got to know what the illusion of sickness is used for. Healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. Healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. For sickness is an election, a decision. It is the choice of weakness in the mistaken conviction that it is strength. So you were mistaken. You thought it was strength and it's actually weakness. Healing must occur in exact proportion in which the valuelessness of sickness is recognized. Healing must occur in the exact proportion in which the valuelessness of sickness is recognized. Now, I can tell you this. It's like what is being shared here, it is, it is so full of healing potential that you should really take a good look at it um, with me. Sickness is an election, a decision. Now that sounds really weird, doesn't it? It's like sickness is an election. It is something you choose for, in other words. You choose for it. Ah, huh, that's so you gotta understand this well. It's like I'm I'm not here to share this with you to make it difficult for you. I'm, I'm sharing this here, so in fact, to extend the absolute love of God. Be sure of this, this one thing, is that God does not want you to suffer. Your suffering has nothing to do with the Father that created you. So, something went wrong, you could say, there is a mistake being made. And that mistake, you will come to the place where you actually recognize, oh my God, that started here. I was actually initiating this. I was using it to a certain, in a certain way. Not that I knew what I was doing. No, in my confusion, I made a mistake. And that mistake led to a thing we call pain. It was, it was just, I was just a little off the mark, you could say. Now, is that the end of the pain, no. So there's a possibility here to to become realigned to the truth within you. And the only thing that you will have to do is like there are a couple of things that you need to do to 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 come to acceptance of the fact that it wasn't literally like a choice for weakness instead of a choice for strength. Like you it didn't offer you anything. It's not going to offer you anything. You're not going to learn anything of it. It's not availing you anything. The only good thing you could say that came from it is that you entered into this class, that you have this being presented to you, that you actually know that you have a choice in this, that the suffering is not done to you, but that it starts here with you, with an idea you hold about yourself, or who knows where you think the pain comes from, which has nothing to do with the truth of the actual occurrence, and it has nothing to do with 
Um, in fact, there is nothing outside of you that can hurt you. So that's that's quite a step. That's difficult to accept just like that. But you will come to that. So this is always with the pain. It's like with the pain, you will come to the recognition that this is not done to you, that it actually starts with your own choice. But you weren't aware that you were making that mistake. And so you will have to forgive yourself, you could say, for doing that. And also, and this is an essential part too, is like you have to recognize that sickness and pain are valueless. They don't offer you anything. There's no need for you to go through those experiences. And then you can say like, okay, yeah, that's easy for you to say, but I, I don't know how to deal with the pain and it's, it's driving me crazy. It's like, I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. I totally get that. Absolutely. So here we are. Possibilities for healing. So that is where you will focus on. Like there's a possibility to get out of this. Whatever you think about it, whatever you have thought about it, whatever you think the cause was, whatever you think, whatever's done to you, this, this, need, this will stop right here. There's no need to continue that by your choice, of course, for it. If you, if you see why you have done this, then you see also that there's no necessity to experience this. And it will become more clear in what I'm going to share with you now. I know this is a very sensitive subject, but that's okay. That's okay. It's very... Yeah, you have to be very honest here and very open because you might have all kinds of dear ideas about it already and they will have to go out of, out of, yeah, say, they have to step back a little bit here. So this is new information coming to you. Did you, did you have enough pain? Yes. That's why you're here. That's why you come to this class. Or that's why you are actually watching this. Sickness is an election. Healing is accomplished. The instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready for this? One need need to say but there's no gain at all to me in this oops sorry one need but say there's no gain at all to me in this and he is healed but to say this one must first recognize certain facts we're talking here about facts right facts it's not opinions it's not possibilities no it's a fact you have to recognize certain facts first it is obvious that decisions are of the mind not of the body the acceptance of sickness as a decision of the mind for a purpose for which it would use the body is the basis of healing so the acceptance of sickness as a decision of the mind for a purpose for which it would use the body is the basis of healing in other words the body doesn't do anything so this is all mind work you could say the mind the acceptance of sickness as an is a decision of the mind and like the mind projected it literally on the body and you really think that that is connected to the body that it has something to do with the body you have no doubt about that but here we're actually putting a big question mark right there so it is an actual fact the decision decisions are of the mind not of the body the body is not deciding to become sick the body cannot do anything right the acceptance of sickness as a decision of the mind for a purpose for which it would use the body is the basis of healing. Now, why is that? 
who is the physician? You can go to a doctor, but who is actually the physician? Only the mind of the patient himself. The patient could merely rise up without their aid and say, I have no use for this. And there's no form of sickness that would not be cured at once. What is the healing requisite for the shift in perception? It simply is this, the recognition that sickness is of the mind and has nothing to do with the body. So I have no use for this. I don't have to go through this pain scenario. I don't have to go through this whole episode in which I'm going to suffer. I have no use for this. I, it has no value to me to do that. But you see, so the, the beautiful thing here is this, and that's why I share it too. It's like the, the clarity that I want to convey to you is this. Do you see it is a decision of the mind? Now first you will have to bring it all back to yourself, in fact. You have to bring everything back. All It all originates, like everything that isn't perfect happiness and total joy and extension and love is coming from your, say, limited perspective, from your human mind. Thinking that things are outside of you, thinking that your body can become sick, that's an idea in your mind. Like it is, you use it actively, like you use it actively, in fact, to deny the love of God. Now, I'm not telling you this to feel even more guilty, although that might help too, because it's like suddenly the pain becomes unbearable and you know it's like originating in you. Nobody else can feel it. You feel that. It is your experience. That's why this is really important. You feel the pain. I'm not denying that you feel that. No, I'm just asking you to recognize where the pain uh, starts. It doesn't start in the body. That's the weird thing. And you might, you you can do exercises. I, I did this many times too with whoever came to me. It's like if you close your eyes and actually try to locate the pain that you feel, then then suddenly you don't know where you place it, except if you touch the body. You say like, well, it hurts here. And then you point at your knee or you touch your knee. Like, no, 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 don't touch your body. Close your eyes and actually start to feel where the pain is and what form it has and maybe even what color it has and where it is or does it shift and change and it shifts on all kinds of places through what you call your body but it, it is in space right because you you cannot even locate yourself so you can also not locate your pain now this is this is a simple say exercise to discover it is not as fixed as i thought it was so actually i i if i don't touch my body i don't i really don't know where my pain is if it would be physical pain and the same of course with with uh, say emotional pain or any kind of other pain it's like there's no thing that causes that pain there's no thing outside of you so there's no pain um say that the pain is related to your ideas that you keep bringing in that you keep repeating to yourself that you keep bringing in because you think somebody's not here because you think somebody left you because whatever the reason is but it always seems to have to do with something that is not there anymore or that is not behaving in the way that you would love it to behave right so this is this is really basic in fact to to come back to but to recognize like no 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 wait the fact is there is nothing outside of you i will have to take responsibility for what i'm feeling because nobody else is doing this to me so in in that sense it is shifting it is it is shifting um out yeah literally coming into this present moment there's a shift taking place in time so you dislodge from the past ideas that yesterday has to do with today you 
in fact you yeah separate that like there's no yesterday that's related to today today is a whole new experience and i'm allowing this to be a new experience for me because I, why would i bring that back into my experience why would i bring the pain back into my experience because i'm so used to it okay that can be well now i start to recognize that i'm it is a mental affair you could say i'm the body's not doing anything so i'm literally using my body to express these ideas now what are these ideas that cause separation and that cause pain that cause loneliness that cause all the pain that you can describe the only re only yeah thing that happens is that you think that you are separate from your source which of course it isn't so it can be said like this it's like now first you have to recognize that you're the source like you're the cause of the fact that you are in pain you chose for that that's a big one you chose for that now it is like the shift isn't over yet so the next thing is you recognize that i didn't make myself all my ideas i hold about myself are in fact to prove something that i'm not including my pain including my sickness including any kind of terror that i'm walking up against wherever i think it comes from but that represents all kinds of ideas that have nothing to do with the source that created me that that is that created me perfectly i and the father are one i am as god created me a perfect like there's nothing missing in that no it is it is so perfect that god is happy with that it's like wow i did that well it is perfect and in in like you can you can f uh, come to that certainty you could say by letting go of your ideas about yourself by thinking like well whatever i thought about myself whatever i thought the cause of this pain was whatever whatever i use this for i know for sure i don't want this any longer there i see no value in it anymore i i don't want to be occupied with it literally so then it says here what we shared it's like there's no sickness that would immediately be cured like it would immediately you would immediately be alleviated from it now you can say like well i'm not sure if that's going to happen well then you have a doubt about it it's like you come you will come to the point where you actually accept this and see that you're free of it you will come to that because literally it is the truth that is that is within you that you can't keep ignoring you could say you cannot you cannot yeah you can fight against the love of god as long as you want or you can prove that you're right that you're in pain and that there's a reason for it and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah you can do that as long as you want until it becomes too much and then you still come to the same point where you where you actually start to see <clears throat> this is not god's will god did not create this pain god did not create this suffering it's not that god is judging me for that or that he's punishing me for the things that i did no there's nothing that does that to me so there's my recognition and suddenly the healing can happen and i see like oh my god i can't believe it i've been in this story for so long and suddenly there's something i don't have to do now this is my individual experience too like at a major major healing uh, at a certain point where the things that i was doing to myself were were just totally destructive you could say and in the moment that i saw that i was doing that i i said this it's like there's no need for me to do this anymore and there's no need for me i see no value in that any longer and the moment that I actually meant what I said, it disappeared. 
and and all the things that I did and thought of that were so destructive had no effect whatsoever. So it was just like it it is gone. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to be occupied with that anymore. So that is that's incredible, and it's very still. It's very quiet you could say it's just something that you don't have to do anymore suddenly it is as if they turn off an engine that was been mon yeah monotonously monotone monotonously um, in a, some kind of rhythm in the background a, annoying noise continuously like on the same level and suddenly it's turned off And it becomes quiet and you know it was successful you feel suddenly connected you feel suddenly that this separation has evaporated this dream is just like like a soap bubble it's gone and and yeah so that's so incredible about healing you could say and we're in the middle of it so you're uh, you receive this for yourself you take um, take this in and take another good look at what is occurring in your life and if you need help with that I'm, I'm right here because I'm speaking from experience in this I, I love to offer this to you but you have to see that for yourself and that's why I'm say sharing this with you too because I know there's a great need for that to see that there's no need for this at all. <laughs> so this is then beautiful in our meeting today. In fact, we come to the place of um, the single desire for the Father. So it's like the beautiful opportunity, just like we did in the meditation, the beautiful opportunity to let a new frequency come in into our consciousness, a healing frequency of something that's already in me the single desire for the father you could say is already in me now i just need to say distance myself a little bit letting go of my thoughts and concerns to come to that to open up my heart to actually say allow myself to feel that and to see what changes are possible and what love i can feel like that's really what this is about so it is so great to express this to you. Thank you so much for listening to that. So in the in the continuing of this meeting, you could say it is um, we're going to share some of these expressions that have everything to do with coming back to this single desire for the Father. And so it's like a continuation of meditation of um, taking time to deeply come in touch with this where the actual healing can occur when where the rebirth can start so but that's the non-public part that we that we have in this meeting so thank you so much for your attention so far and hope to see you soon thank you <laughs>